You want to grab a board. I actually grabbed one that was in my garage. It's a one by two board and my board was 50 inches long. Next, I stain the board with a color called Golden Oak. It's been kind of my favorite color lately. So I'm just gonna wipe it on and then wipe off any excess with a paper towel. You could use any stain color for this. Next, I'm gonna use one of my favorite little macrame yarns. I will link it down below for you as well. So I needed to get 200 pieces of macrame yarn. So what I did was I took some kind of heavy duty plastic. This is the plastic that are in those Ikea frames. And I just started to wrap the macrame around the plastic. You could do this with anything that you have on hand. It ended up my length was about 31 inches, but really this is personal preference. So I wrapped it around about 50 times. Then I cut one side off and then I cut the other side off. So I took all the strings and made a little bundle. So I ended up having four bundles of 50 macrame strings. So I'm gonna take one of my groupings and bend it in half. Then I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I'm going to tape off about, I would say a little bit more than halfway up, maybe three fourths of the way up. And this is going to help us when we go to paint. Now this is where you can really customize this project depending on the colors you like. So I went to Sherwin-Williams wanting to find a light blue and a dark blue color. I ended up grabbing Blustery Sky and Rainstorm and I picked these up in samples. Whenever you buy samples, they're really inexpensive and it's the way to go. So next you're going to get a dish or a disposable little container and I'm going to fill it up about halfway with water. Then I'm going to dump in my lighter paint color and I'm going to mix that around. Then I'm going to take each of my bundles and dip them into where the tape line is at. That way I have a consistent tape line for all of my dyeing. And this is a great way to dye your fabric. Now you wanna make sure you get all of the pieces down in there. Let it set for a little bit, make sure they're coated, kind of pull it up, see if they're coated. If not, put it back in there for more. And then you're going to take it, pull it out, let all the excess drip off, and then you can put it over to dry. I had the same plastic that I used to wrap the cord and just let it sit out on that. Now I let this dry 24 hours before I came in with my darker color. So I did the same technique by adding in water with my dark color. Now when I did this, I realized that there wasn't a huge variation in the color, like it was very subtle. So what I decided to do was add in some black paint to make it a little bit darker. So I mixed the paint around. Now I did run into a problem whenever I started to dip. I realized that some of the black paint had settled to the bottom. And so if the pieces were touching the bottom, it was getting covered with black. So I had to be a little bit careful. So I suggest mixing it up better than I did. When I dip into the darker color, I'm not gonna put it in all the way. I'm just going to put a little bit of the bottom portion in. Now, I wish that I would have gotten a really dark color. So that may be something, or my blue that I used at the beginning, maybe if it was a little bit lighter. So make sure your, your colors are really contrasting. So do that for all four of your colors and let them sit out to dry again. Again, I let this sit out a day. Then after a day, I removed the tape and they still needed some time to sit out. So I actually laid them out flat and gave them, you know, probably, at least a couple more hours to dry out before I did anything with them. Now, if you've seen any of my projects before where I've done this similar technique, I just laid out my board 
And then I'm gonna take all of the strips and lay them out on the back of my board. Now this does not have to be perfect. They do not have to be evenly spaced. Just do the best you can, kind of eyeball it. Then you're gonna come through and hot glue every single piece down. Once you've hot glued, now you have to come in and if you have any pieces that are on the top, you wanna cut those off. Now to hang this on the wall, I thought I'd be able to get away with command strips and that's what I initially tried, but since it was a bigger piece, I ended up having to get hooks. So I recommend using like maybe some little picture hanger hooks on the back for this, but all you have to do is hang it up on your wall, then come in and cut off any excess at the bottom, like any pieces that kind of look weird. Mine actually did pretty well. I didn't have a ton of pieces that had any issues. But here is a look at how this wall hanging turned out. Hey guys, I'm Liz and you're watching my second DIY channel where I post daily DIY videos. You may be familiar with my main channel, Liz Fibic DIY, but I'm glad that you found me over here on my second channel. Make sure that you're subscribed so you just get notified every day when I post our daily DIY video.